think this is episode six of my vlog about uh, songwriting. It's not specifically about songwriting. It's not necessarily a how-to, but definitely this is kind of a journey. And the, the purpose of the vlog originally was just to kind of show you my creative process. And I think my creative process is pretty similar to other creative people, whether they're in film or video or art or whatever. Uh, we see the final product and we like to romanticize kind of like the struggle or the process or whatever uh, and there's definitely truth to that but I also want to give you a little glimpse of what it's uh, really like and I don't mean that like in a, like a gritty thing um, but to show you something and I think about a Brian Eno <laughs> quote that there's this great uh, documentary on Daniel Lanois I think it is here is what is and uh, somewhere along the line uh, he said something I think it's really important to, for people to <laughs> to see that something beautiful can come from shit. And what he's talking about is like originally as something's conceived or as you you know demo something, it's not very good or there's something good there, but you have to kind of like mine it and like refine it and all those things to get to where it is. And uh, that was, I think, his point. And uh, maybe that's what the point of the documentary was to kind of show Daniel Lanois' process. <laughs> And uh, maybe that's what the point of the documentary was to kind of show Daniel Lanois' process. And if you watch that, it's very romanticized, at least. I don't know if that's how he works. If he does, that's how it is. But he's, like, jumping around the studio and very creative and all that. And I don't know. I can't remember the last time I did any jumping when I was doing demos. But that's an aside. Um, also want to talk about kind of where I'm at Uh you know, thinking about this album, thinking about this project, think about the audience, you know, who am I writing for, what is it? And um, in the past, um, I have, you know, looked at grants and applying for grants. And one of the things about the grants where I live is you have to basically, like, show how is this going to sell? Like, how is this going to be successful? They define success in terms of, like, how many albums are sold and that sort of thing. And that's a very important stat and a very important thing to uh, to look at. But... I kind of feel like that, for me at least, is putting the cart in front of the horse um, because I'm me and, uh, you know, I listen to music, I'm aware of what's going on and I'm not stuck in the past. And ultimately, if I, you know, totally put on blinders, uh, you know, for that or ear muffs or whatever, I think I would make really boring music. I would just basically keep making the same album again. And again. Okay, so just showing you kind of what I'm doing, how I do it. This is usually what I do. So uh, I started with a uh, piano part and uh, the, the type of piano I'm putting in there is an imperfect piano. Like it sounds like a piano that's been sitting in someone's living room for like five, 50 years maybe. So this sound. <laughs> So it's not like a super clean piano, uh, but it's got character and I like the way that it sounds. Uh, it's still clean enough though to give us like a harmonic basis. And again, I uh, I did that because when I put on the acoustic guitar, I wanted the acoustic guitar to be really lined up with that. So if I um, hear this acoustic guitar part, so right here, uh, and again, this is intentional in terms of like, I'm putting it down, but I'll replace it later, but it might work out. But I really worked on getting the guitar to tune up to the um, the piano because sometimes they fight each other, but I thought this sounded pretty good. So let's hear the guitar on its own. So it sounds pretty good. How they work together, the space that the guitar is taking up. And you see all the space the piano's leaving, that's because the guitar is there. <laughs> So <laughs> this is the non-Pinterest board version. I'm just going through uh, my notebooks and you can see I have a lot of notebooks going on here, just um, uh, doing them. Here are the notes for a song called Houston that I'm doing. 
And uh, anyways, there's a song I have called Kaleidoscope. And let's see if I can find it here. Uh, across the room, there's another one. So you can see I'm going through Surf Rider. There's another one uh, that I'm working on. Uh, so I like doing it this way. I like working in the journal. Kaleido, here we go. So this song's called Kaleidoscope. So um, <clears throat> I first called it McCartney because I was like, you know what? I love Paul McCartney and I don't want to copy him, but if I kind of like channel Paul McCartney, what would I come up with? And it's not like a Weird Al thing, but it's just like, um, let's say some of the choices he makes with his chords and his melodies and stuff like that and his lyrics. So I really like this song, um, the whole idea of kaleidoscope and my music is kind of psychedelic, just like a kaleidoscope. Uh, so anyways, here's what I did. <clears throat> so I wrote it down in a notebook and then uh, using the notes app in uh, on my phone, I took a picture of it. So. You can see what I did here. I've done this for a lot of things, um, where I take a picture from my notebook, and then on my laptop, then I can actually work on it. So I took a picture of the Kaleidoscope lyrics, and now I'm just um, copying them down and documenting that. So that's how I work often uh, lately. This probably isn't the most efficient way to do it like this, uh, but it gives you a little insight into uh, what works for me. I've been uh, seeing a counselor for the last little while on Zoom, and they are fantastic. And it has really helped me kind of work out stuff. Um, there's no magic answer to it. I think, you know, with anything you need to work, and I'm certainly no expert on therapy, but if that's something that you haven't done before, I'd highly recommend it for anyone. It's really helped me, and I guess the, the best way I can uh, describe it is it's helped me become me. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about uh, when I was little, what was I like when I was 12 and 13, kind of like the age that my children are right now, what was I like? And I don't have mommy daddy issues or anything like that, uh, but it really helped me kind of discover because I felt like when I was a teenager, I could go back and do it. I was too concerned with what others felt about me. I was trying to fit in, trying to be something that I wasn't. And, uh, you know, my music career up until this point is kind of the same, you know, trying to fit into a certain thing. Uh, you know, obviously I'm a little older than most emerging artists, even though uh, you know, I consider myself an emerging artist because I just released my uh, first commercial stuff in the last 10 years. Um, so anyways, it's kind of made me resolve to, for me to be me. And I don't say that uh, about like not trying to, you know, be contemporary or anything like that, but just like to make the album that I want to make, not compromise um, in terms of like trying to get to sound like this or trying to get to sound like that. Just, you know, me be me. And I think you know, at least I'm finding it, you know, really good results when I do that, when I just stick to my vision, stick to this and certainly, you know, get feedback from people and certainly keep my ears open and certainly, you know, do that. And also, again, I don't want to make the same album again. So I want to push myself different sounds, uh, on that, uh, great vocal performances, great instrumental performances, um, great songs, you know, so I want to really, really do that. And I'm convinced the way that I do that is I really have to understand me and I have to put in that time to understand me. And I think good things musically uh, will follow. So that's some advice that I can give you is to, was that to thine own self be true, the, the quote, uh, to really know yourself. And, um, you know, when I look at COVID and stuff like that, spent so much time, you know, quiet time it's been really good in terms of like getting to know myself and realizing who I am and what's important and um, you know another great thing that that's coming up is I booked my first gig I can't wait for that first gig when I come to it uh, you know I won't take it for granted come into it with a full heart and so excited and um, yeah I'm feeling really good. I don't know if that's coming across. I'm just kind of rambling at this point, but things are going really well. Uh, I'm really happy with things. Uh, there's hard work to do in terms of like these songs, but I feel like I'm on the right path.